Roses are red, violets are blue, sugar is sweet, and so are you. Sometimes I'm a little too sweet. All of us are a little too sweet. I've written a blog this week that I haven't got on the, on the website yet, but it will be soon, on sugar, on the different names of the sugar, on what the sugar does to us, what kinds of sugar we need in the carbohydrates, and how to eliminate it. Hi, I'm Jim. I'm Rinda. We're Hardiness Approach. Inflammation. This is also caused by sugar and many other things. And we, as a world, are really suffering from inflammation. And so we kind of got real serious about drawing our line in the sand again and living, raising the level, is that what you said, Jim? Yes. Raising the level up on how we are going to eat. Super happy to tell you that I haven't had, we haven't had bread in about two weeks. And we are bread people. We love bread. All kinds of bread. <laughs> but, um, and it, we didn't really say, let's start eliminating bread. I just stopped making it. And because the kind of bread that I need to make is sprouted bread, then dehydrate, then grind, then bake the bread. Well, <laughs> I haven't had time to do that. So it's a really easy way when you say, I'm not gonna buy any more of the food from the store that is going to cause me to be sick. So we made that decision. Inflammation's a big deal. A little bit less than a year ago, I was having uh, some issues with a height in PSA and so went to the doctor, series of events, you know, a little bit of fear that that was an indicator of cancer as he looked at the, you know, he wanted to do the, uh, the, the biopsy, which he did. There's no cancer, still inflammation, and wanted to take care of that. So there are, as I read about it, five different potential causes of a height in PSA, and inflammation being one of them. And the cause of the inflammation, there's multiple different ways that it can be caused. And one of them is just by something in the area of where the prostate is being inflamed. Uh, so, you know, different body parts, tissues, uh, whatever the other uh, pieces and parts of us that are there. And as I thought about my history and what I was feeling, that I started to make some connections and I hadn't made the connections before. I had been feeling some discomfort at, in two different areas close to there. One in my leg which I believe was uh, pulled muscles and it just took me a while of working with it to get that worked out. And the other was in an area a few years ago I had a hernia operation and they put mesh in there. and. As you who are homesteaders know that if you have a limitation of picking up 30 pounds, pretty hard to avoid on the homestead. And so I found myself in a lot of situations quite frequently needing to pick up more weight than that, doing more exertion than really I should have been doing. And didn't seem to bother me and I just kept doing more and more. Um, I think it bothered me and I actually had those indications, those feelings both in my leg and the muscles that were there and in the area where they had the mesh and I have suspicions that at least part if not all of the inflammation that I've been experiencing that was causing the height and PSA was because I had these overexertions which had inflamed the area caused the inflammation that was there and threw those PSA levels higher. Isn't it one of the indications from the PSA that it said it could be a hernia? They actually mentioned no, it was the inguinal the hernia? And, and when I was doing the research and I saw that, the light started going off for me and so I started saying, wait a minute, I am feeling some sensations. I am experiencing something that's related. This is not something that any of the doctors involved in this ever 
asked about. I mean, they knew the history, but they even, they didn't dig that. They have deeply. their normal things that they do. Absolutely. And, you know, the majority of the cases, that's what it's going to be. Um, but, you know, I, so, you have to take everything into account. And I think those have So what to you be haven't considered. told them yet is, since we've been here, you had another blood test taken. Yes. And after being on grape seed um, extract, organ grape. organ grape, which is a natural antibi right. um, a natural anti-inflammatory. Anti-inflammatory. Your PSA level is even higher than it a was. A little bit higher, not not extremely higher, but it, it was a few numbers higher. So they immediately wanted to put him on Cipro for three months again, <laughs> which we won't do. So anyway, we this is why he's telling you this because. Infl an anti-inflammatory diet is extremely important. Yes, yes, it's very important. And so we've been working to improve not only these extra things that I'm taking, but our whole diet to eliminate any inflammatory foods that we may be eating and making certain that I'm having a better balance in what I'm eating. Plus, I'm refraining from lifting heavy weights and doing extreme exertions so that I'm not causing more inflammation in that area. Kind of frustrated by that, that that's going to be a limitation I have to live with, but it is a limitation I have to live with. Here, Jim. Okay, that was a sardine. Now, it's better than yesterday. You're getting used to it. Different brands are better than others. This one was a really strong, fishy brand. Um, but so good for you. If you look at what is anti-inflammatory, then you can see that it fishy oils. Now see the oil in here? Fatty fish oils. Fatty fish. So we have that. We have... Um, these are wild sardines or a different brand. These are mackerel. This is not a, so much a fatty fish, but it's a fish, and this is what we brought back from Oregon. Um, we are changing what we eat. Now, disclaimer here, remember last week when we were talking about biochemical individuality what we can eat and what you can eat may be completely different. A lot of people say that nightshades are really bad for inflammation. Some of the information we have been reading says eat them. Eat a huge variety and that's why you see this huge variety of food here. Greens are amazing in fact aren't these the most gorgeous kale. All organic, different varieties. I also have spinach in there mushrooms are amazing fruits vegetables citrus and a lot of um instructions will say the, the labels on these eggs are not real these are from <laughs> pastured chickens okay. right here where we live yeah when i was reading about why people shouldn't have eggs the reason is because they are high in omega-6 and they're fed, the chickens are fed a diet of soy and corn. Well, our chickens are not fed a diet of soy and corn. Our chickens are fed an organic grain and they free range and they um, get flax seed, which is high in omega-3. And so these eggs are programmed to be anti-inflammatory. So yes, if I go down to the grocery store and I buy a box of eggs off the, count, the shelf that I have no idea where it came from and you know it's your 99 cent eggs, yes, high in omega-6 because of what your chickens have been fed. So you're saying an egg is not necessarily an egg. An egg is not an egg. So you gotta know, not just Know where the your egg. eggs come from. What they've been eating. Dairy is another thing that we are told that you cannot eat or shouldn't eat on a high inflam on a anti-inflammatory diet. Again, where are you getting your products from? Who what's the source of them? Are they low fat? Anything with low fat, you know, has added sugar. 
Even when we are eating raw milk, we only take a small amount. It's a food. A good milk is a food. Right, Jim? Yes, That's it's not a beverage. It's a yeah. food. So you're going to still need to be able to understand where it came from. If you're just buying butter and, and the cheapest butter that you can get and you don't know where it came from and how it was made, then yes, you're chick you are probably eating something that is inflammatory to your body. Even though we haven't been eating breads, we have been eating grains, we've been eating whole grains. Uh, and some of them we've, we've done some grinding on, but for the most part we've taken the whole grains and used those in various ways. We've used brown rice, quinoa, steel cut oats, and... Buckwheat. Buckwheat. There we go. Which isn't really a grain. Yeah. It's, but it, oh my word, we couldn't believe how much we loved oh, it for it's, cereal. It's exceptional as a cereal. We really, really like it. Oh, you know what else we had? Millet. And then we added some millet in yeah, as well. So, yeah. yeah. So the grains bring a lot to the table for you. If you're going to have them processed and they turn into that white flour, different world, okay? Um, they're going to get rid of some of what you need, the, the nutrients in there, and they're going to provide you what is you know, the best tasting, the most exciting to your palate, but it's going to bring with it all of the inflammatory and fattening options that are in the food but all the good is not there so they they take the balance that the food has and they shift it so you end up with something that's less good and more bad if you will put it in simple terms there there has to be a balance between pro inflammation and anti inflammation what do i mean by that if I cut myself, which I'm really good at, then... She is experienced at this one. <laughs> then those white blood cells move in and where you see the redness and the inflammation, the inflammation, that is inflammation going in to take care of any foreign objects and help our bodies to heal. If we get a virus or a bacteria, phew, those white blood cells go in and start eating away. The balance is to be able to find where your body is not having chronic inflammation. When you eat carbohydrates that are simple carbohydrates that are man-made and they rush in and then your insulin rushes in and then you end up with this middle right here then what is happening is that this is causing inflammation in your body because it is going in crazy to try to eliminate what's happening to it. This inflammation can go into our arteries, get onto the sides of them, kind of roughen them up, and cause then you cause plaque to stick to them. Inflammation is causing our arthritis and our so our obesity increases our inflammation and that's what we need to know now I reached what I call a set point and I couldn't do anything the last few months and it wasn't until the last couple weeks and I'm like it's because I haven't been serious it's because when somebody offers me something I still take it it's because it's sitting there so why not eat it um, the office at Christmas time was crazy and no, I didn't indulge in everything, but I really did not live up to what it was I needed to. When we eat good food and we don't allow that white stuff, white pasta, white flour, white sugar, white or sugar, period, to come into our bodies and we rationalize and rationalize and rationalize. I'll start tomorrow, I'll start tomorrow, I'll start tomorrow. I did everything good but this and this and this. It's the this and this and this that still get us. And that's why we had to raise our bar of what we're eating. And so I can honestly tell you that this week we have eaten so many fruits and vegetables because we just found out that the normal American diet people are only eating 1% of their diet is vegetables, 1%. So I want to increase that to 
of my intake being from vegetables. And so eat vegetables, eat fruit, and eat a huge variety. Eat your fatty fish. And as we're talking each week, we're going to show what we're doing. Now this week, I think we've got two pictures of some um, meals that we've made. I didn't get a picture of our salmon that we made yesterday, and it was really good. Those of you who have the 12 weeks have the recipe for it. It had um, yogurt and it was just a mixture of yogurt and mustard and a little bit of honey spread on the top and then baked. That was it. And it was so good, wasn't it, Jim? It was exceptional. Oh my word, so good. So experiment, but don't let yourself cheat. It's the cheating that does me in. It is. I wrote a blog about a week ago. It's on our website. We're going to put a link to it down in the show notes. I don't know if you can get one up here. I don't here. think so. Probably not. It is on our website. They might let you do that. YouTube is, is... Anyway, the title of it is Why I Choose to Exercise. And I talk about some of my reasoning that I add exercise in to my daily routine. Did we say that exercise reduces inflammation? I don't know if, that, if I mentioned that one or not. It's it one does. more reason. There you go. Exercise. It's a great prescription to follow. I want to show you what we're having for dinner today. I made, um, I took grass-fed beef and our pork, ground pork, and I browned it with onions. I added organic corn to it. I added homemade chili sauce that we made from our garden this year. I added kidney beans to it, and I've let it simmer. Oh, and I added some of our green chilies to it. And and we're making um, soft tacos out of it with cheese that Jim has grated for us. And then, I'll let you see what's in this pan. This is quinoa and potatoes, like riced potatoes, but I don't have a ricer, so I just took my boiled potatoes that were here in this pan, boiled potatoes, and I laid them out, and I just took a fork and mashed them like that so that they were kind of riced and put them in. So it's a cup and a half of quinoa and two cups of potatoes, four tablespoons of cream, and then garlic and your seasonings. And you just make them into little patties and you brown them in here and then you stick them in the oven for eight minutes on 350. So we're having tacos and quinoa potato patties. I'm excited. Tacos with homemade stuffing and p potato quinoa pad cakes. Potato quinoa cakes. Bon appetit. We're putting a picture on here right now of a breakfast we had two mornings ago. We had gone, I think we said we'd gone, did we tell them we went to a Mediterranean restaurant? Yes. We had gone to the Mediterranean restaurant and we'd had red cabbage and we had a lot of it. So we had it on our plate. We had bananas on our plate. Oh, and there was feta cheese on top of the cabbage. And then I took onion, garlic, kale, and cooked it all up. And we do it in we did it in a broth, not yes. even not even in yeah, oil. We, we didn't use oil, just broth. And then we broke eggs into it and scrambled them up. So they're a little bit brown looking just because of the mushroom. Oh, and there were mushrooms, mushrooms and stuff in there. And so you can see this picture. That was our breakfast. It was so good, you guys. It was a variety. We got lots of nutritional value out of it. And this morning for and breakfast. It, and we, it stuck with us. This morning for breakfast, we had lettuce salad out of our garden in the greenhouse. Yes. Uh, he, here we are in January. The temperature's been down in the teens. Every day in the 20s, maybe it warms up a bit. But we went into the greenhouse, not the new one, the older one that's here, and harvested some of our lettuce. And I like, we have neglected it. And if we know I wouldn't say neglected, we've ignored. I've ignored it. And if I'd known it could do this, look out world, because here we come. We're, we need more. Yeah, it was so good. We have been invited over to our children's home today, and we go almost 
Every Sunday. Pretty much every Sunday. And he's in charge of cooking today. It was really my turn, but... But he's proud of something. Very proud of something, of which we're showing you right now. He is a fisherman. And it's ice fishing time. And one or two of these fish were 24 inches long. This guy knows how to fish. So, and so when we said, okay, are we having dinner together? And I, like, I know it's my day. And he goes, can I cook? And I'm like, sure. <laughs> but I'm bringing the vegetables. So, so fresh trout. Freshwater fish. Fresh, fresh. So I am bringing my wok over there. And I have cut up an entire cabbage, onions into rings, um, and behind you, Jim, I pulled out of the freezer a bag of zucchini, shredded zucchini. That's going to go in here. And, hand that back. A beautiful bag of carrots. That's going to go in here. Mix it all together with some herbs and saute it in my wok. That's the side that we're taking for lunch today. I feel really excited about what we way we've eaten this week. Yes, we well it's usually we eat good stuff. This week we haven't eaten bad, bad stuff. stuff. We're calling it stuff. It's food. <laughs> you know, it's gonna be foods with the processing, taking the good stuff out, too many sugars being in it, uh, not the variety that we should have. Yeah. So, yeah. So, all the vegetables we've been eating, good grains, good grass-fed meat, pastured chicken. It's been a great week. Right, right. I hope that you have a great week. Next week, we'll not have a video out on Monday. Right. No promises about if we even get one out during the week. We're going to try to get one out during the week, but no promises. Yeah, we're we're going to be somewhere where there is no internet, and we we're not going to have our computers with us either. So so enjoy this week. Eat well. Work for eating food that is going to reduce some of your inflammation, your arthritis, all the different illnesses that you might have, and have a delightful week. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.